Hi there trader, welcome to this video analysis brought to you by Admiral Markets which focuses on the euro dollar and dollar yen retracements on this 17th of November 2014. Besides those two, also the pound dollar and Aussie as always. And before we continue though, this disclaimer explaining that this video is intended for a global audience, it may not be suitable for everyone. To get the corresponding info, please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange is considered high risk and it may not be suitable for all investors and traders. Therefore, please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This video is for educational and informational purposes only, and you can request a copy of a disclaimer of these disclaimers at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. All right, this week's lineup of webinars, we're going to take a look at the weekly FX recap with Nenet. This Monday, in fact, then tomorrow and Wednesday, you have live strategy and live trading webinars there on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday morning. And then Thursday evening, for instance, you have critical thinking, avoid overtrading, and on Wednesday evening, expert advice with Nenet. All right, first things, first eyes here on the dollar yen weekly chart. And last week was yet again a bullish candle as expected uh, the week before that. And to be honest, I mean, every time this, this, this weekly chart posts higher highs and higher lows, I usually just go with the flow and tend to expect the same thing for this week. Now, of course, at some point or another, there's going to be a doji, there's going to be perhaps a, a bearish candle that could indicate the end of this uptrend, of course. At one point, the trend is going to complete and we might get a bigger retracement. Until that signal is there, and last week we didn't have it, if you look at last week, it was a good normal weekly candle then I tend to just go with that trend, go with the flow, and expect the same for this week. And, you know, a lot of times that happens, and a lot of times that goes well. So, simply put, I'm bullish at this moment. And if you look at the daily chart, and four-hour chart, and bigger monthly chart, and the zoomed-out four-hour chart, a weekly chart, you all see, you will see a bullish trend. So, if I zoom into the four-hour chart, at what point would I perhaps be interested in trading? it? Well, I'm looking for price to get preferably back to anywhere in this zone here where we have these support levels on the four hour chart between 114.50, perhaps 113.20. Uh, that would be interesting if the price could go uh, to roughly those zones, perhaps even 115 is already some horizontal level right in here where you can see tops and bottoms. So I'm gonna keep an eye on four hour price action when it does approach uh, these, these levels, 115, 113, uh, anywhere in there could be bouncing spot for upside continuation and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on price action to see what level exactly uh, price will stop at because at this point that support zone is, is quite wide as you can see on this uh, four hour chart because why the price has of course accelerated here where i will draw a green line this is a big acceleration and we have kind of like a smaller follow through here but choppier upside but still pushing up for some 300 pips so that's why that zone is a bit wider because we've had a support level here and then here and then here and they could really price could really stop at any of these three in fact so that is the reason uh, last note by the way is that last week's low is 113.75 by the way so uh, that would probably be the lowest i would expect it to go uh, if it breaks indeed last week's low then it's definitely not as bullish as one would expect so i would say that is an interesting uh, bear bull line right there so when i looked at the four hour chart i didn't look at the uh, the weekly low so that that green line right there is probably the last i would expect so i would probably narrow that zone from 113.75 up to 115 ish and uh, that would be probably the bouncing spot i would expect below 113.75 then uh, we're breaking that low wouldn't expect that uh, not necessarily bearish as yet because we still have this bigger support trend line but I'll be more cautious in trading the dollar yen. All right, moving on to the euro dollar. Last week was a, a bullish candle, in fact, that, of course, showing the opposite uh, compared to the dollar yen. However, that particular candle is pretty small. It's within the range of the week before. So I'm not all too convinced of a very strong uh, signal of a reversal potentially here. Uh, we had a couple of smaller bullish candles way up top here as well. And that also didn't necessarily cause a reversal. So I, I don't think that this is necessarily a bullish environment as yet. Obviously, we have lower lows, lower highs. That is very clear with this uh, down momentum here. So if anything, we're definitely still in a downtrend 
on this weekly chart from a bigger perspective even on the daily chart you can see that clearly if anything we're probably just moving up and to make a, a lower high which we've had already a couple of them already here and here and we have lower lows here and here so this could easily easily be a lower high and in that regard if we zoom into the four hour chart and put a fib perhaps to see at what spot we could get that lower high uh, then 50 fib 38.2 fib are typical spots for for that and uh, what could happen is that kind of had a, a triangle here last week that triangle broke to the upside so this could be kind of a continuation of a zigzag correction perhaps that's what I'm looking at like that and um, perhaps the triangle is like this like that all right so I'm personally looking more for shorting uh, area right in here or the 50 fib for more downside that is my personal uh, preference uh, we had a four hour candle right now already that's a bit early i mean it's just the week just started so i'm not going to react to that particular signal as yet but i will keep an eye on this uh, four hour chart and uh, today of course the daily candle today perhaps even the hourly but primarily the four hour chart i want to see how these uh, candles after this wick react could we get up to the 50 fib i think it could be a very good resistance spot at the moment it just stopped about halfway that's why i'm a bit more cautious as well so uh, if, uh, for instance, price were to make something like this, down and up, I might start thinking about shorting it here. Uh, if price is more aggressive and I see bullish candles, I'll probably wait for the 50 fib and look for shorts in that zone as well. Uh, personally, of course, the stop loss would be best all the way up here or even here, but that's pretty wide, so I might look for a tighter stop loss if I get a candlestick pattern. The target I'm looking for at least, and once again, this is just for my own trading and sharing you my views of my trading, would be the minus 272 target here at 122.22. So uh, that is my view on the euro dollar. Moving on to the pound. Well, basically, if we look at the weekly chart, it's a bit different than the euro because it actually had a bearish candle last week. So there's no sign of any bullishness in that candle uh, besides a very small wick at the bottom, but not too meaningful, I think. We've uh, had the same downtrend here, of course, as the euro dollar, in fact. And uh, if we look at the four hour chart, we can do the same thing, I think. We could put a fib on the very last swing, high swing, low within this downtrend. And price could stop any of these fibs. But remember the 38.2 and the 50 fib, I would imagine, looking at this particular uh, acceleration below this support line right here within this perhaps this, this channel I don't know but in any case break of the support line that could be a resistance spot by the way as well that trend line and I would expect a continuation of the downtrend at these resistance levels now if it does break above 50 I'm back into neutral I am still more bearish at these particular resistance spots but in general a bit more cautious with trading the pound because uh, it's, it's doing something different than I would expect uh, at this point, I'm expecting a turnaround for continuation of this downtrend. The target would be 155 at the moment, which is the minus 272 target. All right, last but not least, the audio is the is kind of copying the euro dollar in a way because of the fact that uh, it had a bullish week last week, kind of pierced through that high of the week before just a tad. So the Aussie is the, the most bullish of all the pairs we've looked at so far. In fact, it broke through the green line, but how did it break? It broke with a, a wick here at the bottom and then closed bullish and above it the week after. So that break, that particular break is not bearish at all. It's, it's kind of looking like a weak break. So this Aussie might retrace a bit deeper than the other pairs against the dollar here. Looking at the weekly, no, this is the monthly, excuse me. Looking at the weekly chart, we just did that. Let's go to the daily. You see this uptrend channel uh, at this point. Now, of course, needless to say, resistance is still above. But all in all, the Aussie is looking more bullish than the other pairs. That's my point. So I probably would not be the most enthusiastic about at least trading it to the downside if you compare it to the other pairs. Uh, then the dollar strength looks better on the other pairs. In, in this pair, we are also at the top of the channel, by the way, so there could be some retracement. But looking at the fact that we're on, we are in this, uh, the price is in this uptrend channel, um, and the fact that the, the false break to the downside uh, is, well, is as well in play, then I'm a bit cautious with trading it either way, in fact, on the Aussie at this particular uh, point, in fact. So uh, I would probably like to trade the Aussie either at better resistance spot up in here, or perhaps even 
at support up to the top of that channel yet again. So that wraps up this weekly analysis. Thanks for joining us today. Hope to see you in those webinars this week. We got some great lineups, so I uh, hope to see you in one of those or all of those, in fact. Wish you also happy hunting and see you all very soon. Cheers.